in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, a very Merry Christmas to one and all. We're offering our Mass for the welfare of Jesus Isabel Armendariz. As we do so, we join with our sisters and brothers throughout the world, wherever they may be, those who are at home, those who couldn't get home, praying to the Lord that the Lord who came at the first Christmas stays with us and loves us. So we begin by thinking of times when we have failed to respond to that love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and still more wonderfully restored it. Grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, who heralds peace, brings happiness, proclaims salvation, and tells Zion, your God is king. Listen, your watchmen raise their voices. They shout for joy together, for they see the Lord face to face as he returns to Zion. Break into shouts of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord is consoling his people, redeeming Jerusalem. The Lord bears his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now, when the angels had gone from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried away and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what had been told about him, and everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God, for all they'd heard and seen. It was exactly as they had been told. The Gospel of the Lord. Before leaving home, every time now, I've got to check to make sure I've got my keys, my phone, and my mask, because we can't leave home without one. And this is the first far cry from the original purpose. Mask wearers cover their faces to perform, to entertain, and to disguise themselves. The British Museum is full of different kinds of masks in every form and material. The mask tradition lives on, of course, in the annual Venetian mask ball, where the revelers hide their identity to voice their pathos without any judgment. Alexander Dumas, in his fictional novel, The Man in the Iron Mask, changes the course of history when the mask is taken off and the real prince is revealed. Of course, we have a lovely saying, don't we? Her mask soon dropped or his mask slipped and this pandemic has revealed our vulnerability rarely seen and rarely shared today we go to the crib and stand before the one whom all masks are down the god who shows us and is not frightened of showing us his human face he is the one who loves us as we are. He is the one in whose eyes we are beautiful. We are beautiful not for what we do, but for who we are. God is not ashamed or embarrassed to be human. The times we humans may be coy and cautious at revealing our God-given beauty we hide behind our masks. Look at the crib, and you, as you leave the church, please have a look at the crib, and you will see that our shepherds are wearing their masks. Also, the kings are still traveling, so they don't have to wear their masks because they're in the open air. What worries me is I'm not too sure if they're in tier four and we'll be able to get to Bethlehem this year. But our shepherds are wearing their masks. And God says to us this morning, just as he said to the shepherds all those years ago, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. At a time of great national anxiety, God says to us through his incarnate son, take courage, do not lose hope, and don't think that loving others is a waste of time. For Christmas teaches us that God loves us for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, happy or sad. And for us and for our salvation, he leapt from the heavens to walk among us, to be our guide, to be our divine companion, and teach us the way of love. So confidently we can wish each other a happy Christmas this year and next year and all the years to come. Let's say the Cree together and on this feast, by tradition, we genuflect at those words, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven 
out of respect for the Incarnation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, through, through, through with the Father, but through him all things are made. For us, for our salvation, he may now and by the Holy Spirit, he the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord is the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, o Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight, 
and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we are caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels and with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing them your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take the soul of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us whether to be in your presence and minister to you. How would we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, <clears throat> with St. Joseph, her husband, the Blessed Apostles, St. Osman, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Let's join our sisters and brothers throughout the world, wherever they may be, those who've been able to get home, those who can't get home, those in whatever condition they find themselves. Let's unite ourselves closely with them, praying with them to the Father as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Peace to the Lord be with you always. Let's give each other a socially distanced nod and wish each other a happy Christmas. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. To only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us stand to make our final prayer together. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Saviour of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Just again to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. It's lovely to see uh, people back home uh, with their families and together here. Some people say to me, wouldn't it be nice to have Mass as quick as this all the time? Um, somebody was looking for poinsettia in Barnes yesterday. As you can see, we got there first. <laughs> Do have a look at the crib. Anyway, have a lovely Christmas in the bosom of your families. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by your lives. I invite you now to come socially distanced to receive our blessed Lord in Holy Communion.